Okay, just got back from A1 drive shaft. I've gone up to let them shorten the shaft for the T5 transmission to meet the MGB rear. Figured I'd go ahead and have them shorten the narrowed Chevy rear that I have sitting here as well. MG rear with a 390. The uh, Chevy rear I got here is a 308. Large flange. Top shaft is the original Chevy unit that I put together way back. Just had them shorten it to the length needed. In this case, uh, about 31 and 3 quarter inches or so. Middle shaft is what they rebuilt for me to replace the MG shaft that's at the lowest extreme here. Uh, I had supplied the main yoke coming out of the transmission. Everything else is new. The cool part, they actually went through and found a flange to use the larger U-joint from the Chevy style coupling, but the output flange will bolt directly to the MG assembly. And that's pretty cool. Even the step is the same, the bolt pattern offsets the same, but using much heavier U-joints to say the least. I'm real happy with that. Did a great job. It's a whole new shaft, nice heavy U-joints, even gave me the part numbers for the U-joint pieces. Whereas the stock Chevy uses an internal C-clip that's inside the yoke, actually it's an injected plastic originally. Uh, they use a slightly smaller one, but it's an external circlip, so it works the same way the old MG shaft worked. Nice, beautiful, lightweight shaft. Thing actually weighs less than the B shaft. Yep, amazingly, that big tube is lighter. I'm real happy. You know, everything mechanical is finally done. Radiator is in. Finally got my filler neck. Fuel lines are in. You can see my cold air box down in the corner. Two holes at the lower side of the radiator allow cold air in, keep the rain out. Massive amount of electrical wiring to do. All the stuff's been run through a conduit under the fender. The firewall wires that usually come up from underneath of the car for the back harness actually come up on the inside through a conduit, route across the decking, and over to the hole in the side where you've seen my relay boxes go Quickie update, I'll try to move in a little bit. Some cold air box, as I mentioned, fits beautifully. Uses the radiator bolts itself to lock it in. Two holes down the bottom, let the air in. Don't let the water hit the filter, hopefully. Fuel lines in, remote filters in. Pressure sensor with a mechanical line going up to the mechanical gauge on the dash. Fuel lines, speedometer cables in. I actually found a 90 degree adapter for the fuel or for the speedometer line. It fits beautifully, snakes in, it's out of the way, it doesn't even have to be fastened, lays there naturally away from everything. The braided line is the clutch. Got a 90 degree up here at the uh, slave cylinder itself. Down at the bottom, got a custom made AN3 stainless steel line, gives me a little loop and a little free play. You can see the heater piping, try to follow the contour. Amazingly, the heater valve actually is using the original valve. All the plastic conduits, all the wires just laying loose at the moment, haven't wired it in. But the original MGB cable fits the new valve pretty well. Brass plumbing, 90 degree turns to route it into the heater box. Should be pretty interesting. Neat little apparatus just added, a little Dakota Digital here. I don't know if you can even see it, kind of buried. Dual fan controller, temp, has an AC kick in. That's mounted right next to where my fuse box will be and where the relay box is going to be. Ton of wiring left. Custom drive shaft underneath is gorgeous. All the fuel lines have been routed back to the tank with the new tank that has the in fuel or in tank pump. All high power lines going everywhere. 16 fuses are planned, 10 relays are planned. 